Hey everyone, Dr. Kehe here. I wanted to record a demo video of me analyzing the same data that you'll be doing for your third exam. That way you'll have an on-demand walkthrough uh, basically 24-7 whenever you need it, whenever you happen to write this stuff up. So to get started, uh, you'll download this data set from Canvas, and this is what you'll see. The first thing to point out, if you look down here in the lower left, there are two ways to view this data. So we have a data view and a variable view. The data view is showing us the data. So here we know uh, school 8, so it's from region 4, gender uh, is 1. We see the different salaries, the state, the school, all of that information. So we have all of the, these different cases of data that we can see in data view. Variable view is going to list our different variables, so that's what you're seeing here. You can change a couple of different things here. Uh, probably the most useful thing at this stage in your career is going to be this right here. So here we have region. It's coded 1, 2, 3, 4, but we don't know what those numbers mean. You can click here in the values tab and it will show you exactly how we have that coded. So as you get more advanced, you'll be doing this coding on your own. So of course you'll know what those are, but uh, at the level you are right now, this is where you would find this kind of stuff in the data sets that I give you. So one is east, two midwest, three is south, and then four is west. Same thing for gender, so we know uh, females one, male is two, and so you can get all of that from the variable view. Now because your task is to look at a particular region in the United States, the first thing that you need to do is select data. So go up here in your menu bar, you have a data option. Go down to select cases. Uh, it will by default be on all cases. Go to if condition is satisfied and then click on that if to define what happens. This will be blank so I've been doing this all morning so it's already filled in. So this is what it will look like. You want to select if a certain you want to select a certain region. So you'll just move that region variable over and then equals and then depending on what your region is you'll put that number here. So say that you are looking at the east you would do region equals one. Go down here, hit continue. You can hit OK. It will automatically do this for you. Or of course, in my courses, uh, I encourage you to hit paste. If you hit paste, you'll get some syntax that looks something like this. Just this one little paragraph here. And of course, you can hit the play button and it will run that filter for you. So going back to your data set in data view, you can check that data selection worked by looking at your um, case numbers, your row numbers there. So here you can see everyone in region four is marked out. SPSS is ignoring these cases. Scroll down to region one. That's the region we selected. You can see there are not marks through that. This is what we're looking at. We have region three marked out. We're not using it and then region two is also marked out. So that's the first thing that you'll need to do. I'm going to remove that filter. I'm just gonna to go to data, select cases, all cases, hit okay, because I don't wanna give any one group the answer. Once you have selected your group, uh, you know, your region, your east coast, west coast, all of that good stuff, you'll need to actually run your t-test. So what you do here, analyze, compare means, independent samples t-test. So remember we have two independent groups, males and females, and we want to see how they differ uh, in their salary in higher ed. So again, everything will be blank when you open it up. You have two different boxes to choose from. You have a test variable and a grouping variable. So your test variable is your dependent variable. That's what we're interested in looking at. So for your exam, I want you to use that average salary. So that's going to be the average of assistant, associate, and full professor salary. So across all of those academic ranks, what does the overall salary look like? We're comparing by gender, so that's our grouping variable. So just click on gender, move it over, and then we have to define what groups we're comparing. So here we only have two different groups. We have a one and we have a two. So you just hit define groups. Group one is one, group two is two. You have some options up here that you could change. I would encourage you uh, just leave them the way that they are. Uh, you could change your confidence interval. You could change the way that you deal with missing values. Um, again, at this stage in your career, just let these defaults sit the way they are. They're fine. 
You can hit OK and get your results. Again, I'll encourage you to hit Paste so that you get the syntax that you can save for later. If you go to that syntax, you'll see this little paragraph that says t-test groups and all of the code to run that analysis. Highlight that, hit Play, and you get your t-test results. So these two boxes, that's what you get. Um, so if you need to, if you're in a computer lab uh, and you, you know, are running out of time, you can print these two. All that you'll need is these two and then access to the internet. You can calculate your Cohen's D. You'll have everything that you need. You don't need SPSS anymore. The first thing it's giving us, group statistics. So it's giving us, uh, uh, you know, average faculty salaries for females average faculty salaries for male, so that's our mean. We also get our standard deviation and we get the ends of each group. So we had 150 females, 150 males. If you do find group differences, you'll, uh, you'll need to write these up. So that's where this comes in handy, right? So if we find that they're different, uh, we'll be able to see who's earning more, who earns less, all that kind of stuff. So to find that, we go down to the second box, independent samples t-test. The first thing we need to look at is our assumptions testing, right? So we have some assumptions. One is that we have equal variances across groups. Um, so that's what Levine's test is, these first two boxes here, testing to see if variances across groups are approximately equal. Here you want uh, the p-value to be actually above 0.05. So, um, a, a P above 0.05 would mean that you can assume a quality of variances. If it's less than 0.05, it means that you have a violation and you need to um, use some statistics that are, are slightly different to correct for that. So here our p-value is above 0.05, so we're good to go. We can assume a quality of variances. All that means is that we're going to use this top line of data to write up and interpret our results. Again, if this p-value was less than 0.05, we would just drop down to this bottom line. We would note in our write-up that we have uh, violations. We can't assume a quality of variances, and we would write up this bottom line. So we know we can interpret the top line. P is greater than 0.05, no violations. So we need our t, degrees of freedom, and statistical significance. So this uh, p-value here, remember it cannot be completely zero, so our p is actually less than 0 0.001, which meets our uh, magical number of 0 0.05, and so we know that our groups are different here. So how do we know uh, how they're different, who's, who's earning more, those kinds of things? Well, to answer that, you go back to that first box. So we saw that males are earning about $85,000, females about $79,000, and so we can say now males earn more than females. So the last thing you'll have to do is write this up. So here's an example write-up. So um, I did this in three sentences. You might be able to do it in two, but just really short, sweet, and you write it up. So you want to start by saying an independent samples t-test, and so I'm just going to edit what I did earlier because there were mistakes in this, was uh, conducted to examine gender differences in faculty salaries across the United States. So just an intro paragraph telling us what analysis did you run and why were you running it. So that's what we were doing. Now we're going to talk about in our second paragraph, or second sentence rather, uh, we're going to talk about our assumptions. So here we say Levine's test for equality of variances showed no violations, comma p equals 0.119. Note that that p value, uh, the p is italicized, and all I did was I pulled it from that second table down here, 0.119. You'll do the exact same thing. Our third paragraph will say our results. So results indicate that males, in parentheses, we have the mean which I just pulled from that first box, 85, 607, 22, standard deviation, uh, 15, 53306, earned more than females, again the mean standard deviation across all faculty ranks in the United States, comma, and then here's where we do all of our T uh, reporting. So we have T, and again that, that uh, T is italics uh, for APA style. In parentheses we have our degrees of freedom which is 298. So again we're just pulling from that top line of our results box. Equals, and we put our actual T statistic there, negative 3.62 comma 
p and so because it is uh, it's it's really really teeny tiny right and so we can't say p is zero because uh, you know that's nonsensical so we put p is less than 0 0.001 comma and then we have to do Cohen's d so remember Cohen's d is our effect size so our p value is going to tell us it's going to answer our first question do we have anything are our groups different so it's less than 0.05 the answer is yes but again in and of itself that is uh, pretty pretty useless information right we really want to know how different are these groups and so that's what Cohen's D will tell us um, so SPSS unfortunately does not do this for us automatically but you can go to your favorite uh, web browser Google Cohen's D calc uh, find this one from, um, I believe it's the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, uh, Dr. Lee Becker. Uh, this is a pretty reputable uh, calculator that I use all the time. You can calculate Cohen's D using your means and standard deviations from that first box. So again, you just enter the mean from group 1. Mine was 794.9732, the standard deviation for that group. 13, 6, 6, 8, 15, group 2, 85, 6, 0, 7, 22, standard deviation, 1, 5, 5, 3, 3, 0, 6. Hit compute and we can see that our Cohen's D is negative 0.417. You can ignore the signage here. So if we had just swapped our group 1 and group 2, it would be positive 0.417. Um, so it doesn't really matter. You can just report Cohen's D equals 0.42. And so that's what I did. Uh, so from there, uh, you can Google, because uh, this this will do it for your results section, but in your discussion section, you need to talk about, you know, is this a pretty large difference? Is it a small difference? What's going on? And so there are some benchmarks. So again, your textbook has those, your course notes have those. Uh, so you'll need that for the discussion section. But as far as your results section goes for exam three and whenever you're writing a petit test, just these couple of sentences, that simple SPSS analysis, and you're good to go.